Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Sunday, September 1st, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. A long duration M5.5 solar flare produced a massive coronal mass ejection. The good news, it was from a sunspot region that has not yet turned around the limb, so this blast was probably bigger than M5.5. More on that in a moment. We also had a major earthquake earlier today, 6.4 in Papua New Guinea. Keep calm. It's boom time. They are tracking multiple areas for potential development in the tropic right now. We are at September 1st, which is the first peak of a double peak of the peak for Atlantic tropical climatology. The main peak will be coming September 10th. So we'll see if we do have some development from disturbance one or disturbance two. The current run, model run, 18Z, does shows that Disturbance 2 will not develop into a major hurricane and is just going to show up here on the Yucatan once again, wrap around maybe Texas, become a tropical storm here and over Florida there. But if we go back to the 12Z, still has that storm and potential hurricane for September 17th. So we're still so far out. None of the models are coming together yet. Um, so it will, it will be a matter of at least a week before we know what is coming. And nobody's bumming about that. Let's take a look at the current weather. There are some pop-up storms in what appears to be Tennessee there, um, in North Carolina. So that's going to continue to move east overnight and offshore. By tomorrow, Monday afternoon, we could see some severe weather threat for North Texas there, the nexus of the Schmexus, and that will continue throughout the day. Hey, hey. Critical fire weather concerns across the West, heavy rainfall in Central Texas. Increasing winds and dry conditions have prompted elevated to critical fire weather concerns across parts of the Pacific Northwest, the Great Basin, as well as central to the Northern High Plains. Thunderstorms are forecast to produce heavy rainfall which may lead to scattered instances of flash flooding across much of the Texas Hill Country on Labor Day. Flood watches have been issued, and click on your county for more info. Here we are at the temperature anomaly map, and I want to show you how quickly and how chilly it's going to get for the country. Here's September 1st. Take a look at the evening, this evening's temperatures. Those areas in that purple uh, 12 to 16 degrees below normal, and that's going to continue through September 2nd. Take a look how cool it's going to get for Iowa, and say it ain't soda. Take a look at September 2nd, Monday night. It's going to be cool across Texas and the Northeast, and this cool pattern continues in the South, which is good news because they've been burning up. Very cold pattern as we move through the beginning of September. Look at that. That's a cold bomb right there. The Northeast is going to be chilling by the second week of September. A September to remember. Now, a series of earthquakes have been shaking Southern California. Are we prepared for the big one? In California, 55 earthquakes, magnitude 3 or greater, have been recorded in the last 30 days. One of these earthquakes had a magnitude of 5.4, all of them occurring in Southern California. And this is on a new fault that has been discovered in association with the San Andreas, which has a very high probability of slipping in a big way. You can see that activity in Southern California continuing today with some activity in the Hawaiian Islands. And the quake of note is the 6.4 in Papua New Guinea. No tsunami warnings or watches. Some mid-ocean ridge activity and an interesting quake up here, 3.8 in Pierreville, Canada. Rare rumbler there. Worldwide Volcano News, Kikai Volcano, new one to the list. A 6,000-foot puff today. Beautiful activity here from Stromboli as a new lava flow has been confirmed. Explosive activity continues at Kadim Sky probably triggered from that major earthquake just uh, two days ago. Samaru, 15,000 foot. Sangay to 23,000 foot today. Ibu to 8,000. Sokorijima, 8,000 foot puff. 
Raventa, though, 15,000 foot puff today. Sabancaya, Semadu on the list, 15,000. Fuego to 15,000. Chevalouche, 33,000 foot blast. That is the same height as Karimsky just the other day. 33,000 foot puff. Libertoli, uh, also on the list, flight level 9,000 foot, Sangay to 20,000 foot, Samaru to 14,000 foot, Revendador, 15,000 foot puff, Ibu to 8,000, Nevada de Ruiz, 21,000 foot puff, Swanosima on the list for 6,000, Seven Kaya continues intermittent puffing, White Island, an 8,000 foot blast, that's the biggest since the uptick there. And Stromboli, again, lava flows continue, Chivalouche to 33,000 feet, Ibu to 8,000, and Liwa Toby to 10, wrapping up the list for Worldwide Volcano News. As we move over to space weather, and we'll take a quick look at solar activity over the last 24 hours. There is that long duration, M5.5. Uh, the good news is that this coronal mass ejection is not going to affect Earth in any way. A noteworthy eruption beginning around 1200 UTC September 5th, September 1st, was observed off the southeast limb. Goes 16 measured the flare at M5.5, but may have been stronger due to the location not being fully in view. A bright, fast-moving coronal mass ejection was produced and should be directed away from Earth. And that is the big news of the day. Now, that sunspot group is going to be facing us. Let's take a look at the latest HMI intensity, and you can see that that group right here responsible for that flare is now turning around the limb should be visible fully for tomorrow night's update and here we're going to take a quick look over at soho movie maker at lasco c2 where you can see that blast we could slow it down for you so you get a better look here boom all right so we can reverse this back in suck this flare back into the sun and you can kind of get an idea how huge it is. So there's only one, two frames, and by the third frame, it is blasted out, frame number four. So huge explosion, lots of plasma. If this was the Earth facing, we would be in for quite a show, folks. The good news is headed away from Earth. Now, there is some spectacular things happening in the night sky in September. You're going to be able to see Saturn and its rings and its moons without a telescope, just a pair of binoculars. Plus, there's also a partial lunar eclipse for North America mid-month. September is going to be the best month to view Saturn ever. The planet will reach its peak brightness on Sunday, September 8th, 2024. At this point, it will also be at its opposition, meaning Saturn will be directly opposite of the sun in the sky, making it visible all night long for stargazers everywhere. Saturn's brightest period also coincides with it being closest to Earth. Although Saturn is at its brightest the second week of the month, you'll be able to spot the planet throughout every night of September. It will easily be seen without a telescope, and you may be able to see the planet's rings and some of the bigger moons if you've got good binoculars. Now, a partial lunar eclipse will also be visible across nearly all of North America, with the exception of western Alaska. The time to look for the partial eclipse is Wednesday, September 18th at 8.44 p.m., which will be the height of the eclipse. This lunar eclipse will also be a supermoon, meaning the moon will appear slightly bigger than normal. Now, I don't know what time zone this is. Ozark Radio, probably central time. So that would be uh, 9.44 Mountain, 11.44 Eastern. Now, we talked about this story, but NASA is now asking for you to look for space debris in your backyard. Pieces of the meteorite may have fallen in Spruce Pine, North Carolina area, and NASA is seeking information. NASA has reported that pieces of a meteorite from the recent 830-24 fireball explosion over North Carolina may have fallen in the Spruce Pine area. Our meteorite expert is able to verify any rocks found, so contact Anthony Love at loveab at appstate.edu. The space photo of the week is the Milky Way's galactic twin captured by the dark energy camera. NGC 6744 is a spiral galaxy bigger than ours, 
but otherwise very similar to our own. And NASA has dubbed the Large Spiral Galaxy the Milky Way's Big Brother. It's nowhere near us. This galaxy is over 30 million light years away in the constellation Pavo. But scientists use this to understand how the Milky Way uh, uh, operates because we have no way of taking picture of our own galaxy because we are in the middle of it. How do you like them apples? It's all rainwater. Scientists discover an unexpected missing link in the origin of life. And they claim that rainwater could be the reason, well, that evolution occurs. All the links will be below. Recently, catastrophism... Um, Substack that I uh, belong to here had written two articles challenging Ben Davidson's 90 degree pole flip hypothesis. And well, it didn't go too well for Ben Davidson. In fact, he replied to some of the criticisms here in article number two. And then the author goes on to, well, tear apart Ben Davidson's 90 degree pole flip theory using Ben's own data and other publicly available data. It's, it's really worth the read. Go get it. And also, come check out our other channel, Magnetic Reversal News, for the upload that Leah and I did last night, Submarine Canyons, Late Phase Solar Flare Threat, and a whole half hour dedicated to the unprecedented Gulf of Mexico hurricane activity during the Dark Ages. And that, in fact, very little activity has been going on in the Gulf of Mexico as far as hurricanes over the last 600 years. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video. We need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. Watch all of our podcasts in one place, commercial free. But most importantly, be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Happy holiday. <laughs>